By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'd like to talk about Chronicles, the reprint set that made everybody really, 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 really upset in 1995. And so the story of Chronicles begins with me discussing another set, Renaissance. So you saw this booster pack earlier at the introduction. Uh, Renaissance is not a German, French, Italian version of Chronicles. I used to think that too, but it's not. It's actually a different set. And I will be opening this pack of Renaissance at the end of the video. And I will actually explain a little bit more about this reprint set. But for now, I'd like to focus on Chronicles and I'd like to take you to the early um, summer. I would like to take you to the start of the month, August in 1995, when Chronicles got released. But actually, I'm gonna rewind the clock a little bit further. I would like to take you to the WOTC headquarters and what they were thinking about at WOTC about making Chronicles, because you have to understand the magic landscape at the time. You had uh, revised that just came out and revised had a pretty decent print run and um, I remember buying a few packs of revised that was available in the Netherlands but a lot of uh, magic expansions uh, and magic core sets were not available uh, or hardly available so especially when you were in Europe cards from the dark uh, legends antiquities Arabian Nights they were super difficult to get and you didn't have the internet as you have it today. I mean, you could email a little bit, but hardly anybody was using it. You, you couldn't just you know, go online and, and order whatever you wanted to. It was simply impossible. And that's why Wizards of the Coast came up with the idea to create a set best of 1994 and think, okay, this is going to give the players that are new to the game of Magic the reprints that they want to and that will allow them to play with the cards that they see others play with and that they want to have. Because you can imagine if you're a starting player and you see these really cool cards from Legends to Dark, Arabian Nights, etc., and you cannot play with them yourself, you get frustrated and maybe that will eventually lead into you leaving the game again. So you just started Magic but you're already going to leave because hey, if you cannot get the cool cards, why would you continue playing? And so they came up with the idea to make a reprint set. Now you have to understand before Chronicles, Cards from expansion sets had never been reprinted before. So this set is a first time in the history of Magic the Gathering. And what they did is as soon as the set got released, players, store owners were going mad. They were going bonkers. They were, and not in a positive way, they were very negative against Chronicles. And let me just go to the back of the my Chronicles set because the back of the set actually explains why so first we see here the original wrappers of chronicles unfortunately i don't have a booster anymore i would have opened that booster for this particular video um, but here we see the elder dragons now you have to understand magic at the time was very much based around combat combat synergy and you basically wanted to win the game by having very strong creatures on the board a creature like shivan dragon could win you the game but then the set Legends came out, and Legends had some insanely strong, cool, fantastic characters. And of course, it had the Elder Dragons, huge flying creatures that, you know, usually also had an uptick. And of course, you had to pay some mana to cast it, and you had to pay your upkeep costs. But that wasn't that bad. For those days, the Elder Dragons were super playable and very powerful, and also, they were valuable. So... When this set came out, all of a sudden, people that invested part of their money, and let me see if I can get a better focus on this beautiful Nico Bolas Chronicle Edition, um, people had invested in these cards. They had paid a pretty penny for these cards. Store owners had binders full of these expensive original cards from Legends, Antiquities, Arabian Nights, etc. And all of a sudden, the value of these cards, in their minds at least, dropped to zero. Because, hey, why would you buy a Legend Nicobolas if you can just buy a Chronicles Booster Pack and you can open one Minty Fresh? You know, so as we know now, nothing beats the original. So even though, even if you're going to reprint Nicobolas now, I don't know how many times, 
the card wouldn't be very popular, especially if it would have different art. But even with the original art from the Chronicles, it wouldn't really affect the prices of the original uh, bolas. But they didn't know that at the time. This was a completely new scenario for a lot of people. So people started to freak out. And so Watsi said, okay, we will never make uh, a set like Chronicles again. We will never do it. And they've actually kept their word until, oh, let me try to get this back in the sleeve, until um, um, the set Modern Masters. So, I mean, for, de for more than a decade, they kind of kept their word and they didn't, uh, make a similar set. So that's how angry the player base was and how negative the whole attitude was towards Chronicles. And what happened is I was one of the players that actually Watsi made Chronicles for. You know, I was 10, I had a small budget, I saw these beautiful cards, I wanted to own them, but I had no money. And then Chronicles came out and that would give me access to these fantastic cards. But what happened is I got dragged into that negative sentiment and I started to agree with people that said Chronicles is horrible. It's a fake set. I'm not. It's fake, you know. Um, so I never actually played with Chronicles until many years later when I started to understand more of the game and I started to see, wow, Chronicles is actually a pretty fantastic set in terms of giving players access to really cool cards. and. Uh, when you love to play with different types of cards, when you love to play with different types of decks, when you love to play to, to when you love to brew and, and try to come up with new synergies, sets like Chronicles are vital, especially now in the, in the old school scene of today, they're vital to brew when you have a smaller budget. So my whole look at Chronicles has completely changed. Um, but I do understand that when you are investing into magic or when you have... Uh, or when you had a, a game store at the time and you're selling singles just to keep your game store uh, alive, you know, floating, you're really upset when you see Watsi simply saying, you know what, Gauntlets of Chaos, it's one of those cards that uh, was very popular at the time, valuable at the time as well. You know what, Gauntlets of Chaos, we're just going to put it in a reprint set and we're going to reprint millions because the print run of Chronicles um, was actually... And let me look, I have it here. It's actually 180 million cards was printed in Chronicles. At the time, that was huge. For now, that would be a small set. But at the time, that was a huge print run. So, you know, people got really upset about having a Gauntlet of, Gauntlets of Chaos reprint. And people started to dump their original cards, thinking, you know what, they've lost their value. Well, they made a, they made a mistake because they underestimated the value of having the original and that is still what drives old school magic today is having the original and the cool thing is and please leave a comment if you disagree because that's absolutely fine but what i notice is that if you're playing with the reprint and you're enjoying the card and you're liking the card and you're starting to connect with the card you eventually end up buying or saving for an original copy uh, of that card but if you're simply playing it a couple of times and you're I don't know there's not a connection with the card you think okay you know what I try to brew something with it it's not successful I'm gonna put it back in my binder whatever it's just a chronicle it's fine so for me chronicle is like this experimental garden that allows me to try out all these different weird cards so this is um, this is part one where I've told you a little bit about the history of Chronicles and now we're about to go into part two of this video where I will be showing you my favorite cards of Chronicles. Okay, we have reached part number two of the Chronicles video and in this part number two I'm going to show you my favorite cards of the set and I'm actually going to tell you how um, I think these cards can be combined. So giving you a little combo info here. But before I do that, I want to show you some staples of the set that I think make the set very valuable as well for for just the whole old school magic community because you have if you have a smaller budget and you want to start playing it can be quite overwhelming to see all the cards and all the prices and a really nice example of what Chronicles is, is giving to us is basically cheap reprints so City of Brass uh, is here if you want to get the original City of Brass from the Arabian Nights I mean, you're looking at a hundred plus dollars. I, I don't know much about pricing, but I know it's really expensive. Um, so if you're a starting player, I would definitely advise you to just get a play set of City of Brass from the Chronicles. It's very affordable and um, you can even use City of Brass instead of playing with dual lands. So just start with City of Brass 
And then if you like the format, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, you can always consider getting the more expensive cards. Hey, but I mean, if you have the budget, go for it. But if you're, <laughs> if you're more on a budget, City of Brass is a great place to start. Uh, also Blood Moon, another one of those very useful reprints in uh, Chronicles. So that's another one. I believe this is the most expensive card of the set, but let me know if, if, if I'm mistaken. Uh, Lance Edge, another one of those cards. Obviously, uh, the deck Lance Edge and Lance Tex is uh, a popular deck. It's a good deck. It's fun to play. Uh, so Lance Edge is, is giving you the possibility of an affordable reprint here in Chronicles. Um, and maybe the card that we see the most being played of Chronicles is the Urnum Jin. And uh, the thing is with Urnum Jin, I, maybe, I guess City of Brass sees more play than Urnum Jin. But okay, but after that, followed closely, very closely by Urnum Jin. Um, the cool thing here by Urn and Jin is that the Arabian Nights version is like a hundred plus dollars, but the Chronicle version is like 50 cents. So it's really, really great that we have an expansion like Chronicles that's allowing us to, to just play with Urn and Jin and experiment with Urn and Jin and more importantly, allowing new players in old school magic to enjoy these cards. You know, I, th I think, I think that's really important as as a format to get new players in and, and enjoy and see how cool these, these old cards are. So this is kind of the little part where I talk about, okay, these are really useful reprints, almost more from a business point standpoint where you say, I just want to brew uh, this deck and that deck and okay, then you can use these cards. But now let's talk about what I think is the more fun part. Let's talk about cards that are just a little bit insane and how you could use them. So here we have Ashnaut's Transmogrant uh, it's a card from originally from the Antiquities. It's one to cast. It's an artifact. And it reads, Sacrifice Ashnaut's Transmogrant to put a plus one, plus one counter on um, target non-artifact creature. That creature becomes an artifact creature, although it retains its color. So this is super important. It turns into an artifact creature. And when it's an artifact, all of a sudden, you can play Steel Artifact on it. You can play Shatter on it. You can play Disenchant on it. But you can even do more broken stuff. You can combine it with Aladdin, and Aladdin allows you when you tap it. It's also a card in um, in Chronicles, by the way. So maybe I can just show it to you. So Aladdin, here it is. Um, Aladdin allows you to pay three and tap to gain control of target artifact. And then, um, so because of uh, Ashnos Transmogrant, you're basically turning Aladdin into a control magic on a stick. So that's pretty cool. Right. Um, it would be nice if you could also find a way of getting your, your Transmogrant back onto the battlefield again and do the trick again. Maybe combine it with an archaeologist or something. But hey, the idea of, of using this in combination with Aladdin, I just think it's hilarious. Maybe you can even combine it with Atoc. Uh, I do know there's also a really cool card. It, it's, it's something bandits in green. I'll, I'll have it up on the screen here somewhere uh, uh, for you to, to take a look at it. And you can tap it and you can also steal... Uh, an artifact. So that could also work with uh, Ashnaut's Transmogrant. Um, so that's one of the combos that I wanted to show you. And obviously there are more, but I'm just going to point out a few of them that, that I really like. And this is another card. Oh, let me try to get it out. Um, Voodoo Doll. Now Voodoo Doll is just this <laughs> obscure card from Legends. Legends is just full of these beautiful cards. It's six to cast. It's an artifact. Uh, it reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a pin counter on Voodoo Doll. If Voodoo Doll is untapped at the end of your turn, it deals X damage to you, where X is equal to the number of pin counters on Voodoo Doll. If Voodoo Doll deals damage to you in this way, destroy it. Okay, so wait a minute. So if it's untapped, it's going to deal damage to you. Let me just have a look. If Voodoo Doll is untapped at the end of your turn. Okay, so you have the entire turn. Okay, so let's take a look. Then it has a tapping ability, XX tap. So you've got to pay... Uh, two mana per pin counter. So the first turn you get one pin counter, you have to pay two and tap. So Voodoo Doll deals X damage to target creature or player, where X is equal to the number of pin counters on Voodoo Doll. Okay, so this is quite interesting. So you have to keep paying Voodoo Doll or else it's going to damage you. Now, in the background, you see this very interesting lands, the Tron lands. I think Tron and Voodoo Doll would be a super cool combination. Now, Tron lands are um, Earth's Mine, Earth's Power Plant, and Earth's Tower. And if you have um, all three of those lands in the game, 
something magical happens with those lands because they start to produce extra. So Urza's Mine is producing two mana, Urza's Power Plant produces two, and then Urza's Tower produces three colorless mana. So in other words, when you have these on board, you have a lot of mana and you can sink that all into your Voodoo Doll. So, I mean, are you going to win the game on the spot? Not really. Is it cool to do? Yes, yes, yes. And you should definitely do it. Okay, so let's have a look here. Oh, yes, yes. There's another card I want to discuss, which is just uh, a little crazy. Oh, and this is the Petra Sphinx. So it is... Um, Oh, there goes the camera. It is uh, white. It's from Legends. Uh, Petra Sphinx is Summon Sphinx. Three white and two to cast. So that's huge. It's a 3-4 creature. It says tap. Target player names a card and then turns over the top card of his or her library. If it is the card named, put it into that player's hand. Otherwise, put it into that player's graveyard. So um, what you can do here is you can mill your opponent for one at a time. Which is not, I mean, it's not great. What you want to do, of course, is you use it for your own library. And there's a card in Legends as well. As well, It's called Visions. And with Visions, it's a sorcery for one white. You can look at the first five cards of your library. So if you're using Visions, you can just continue drawing extra cards with your Petra Sphinx. So, I mean, that's some, it's a small little combo. I know there are other ways of... of you know, of course, you can you can combine it with a Sylvan Library, of course, and all that stuff. But I was looking for a way to use Visions, and this is a way that you can use Visions. So, okay, there's it's cool, it's cool. And let me know if you've tried playing with this card. I think, for me, the biggest problem of this card is it's three white. So that's why I tried to think of how can I combine it with another white card. Um, so there we go. So let's put this one back. It was going a little bit difficult. Okay, and then we have another card I really like, Fish Liver Oil. So what Fish Liver Oil does, it gives target creature Island Walk. Yeah, it's an enchant creature. Now by itself, that's not really impressive. But what you can do is you can use this card to turn your Mer Merfolk Assassin, or actually to turn your Fish Liver Oil into Poison by combining it with uh, Merfolk Assassin. So if you have Merfolk Assassin on the board, it's a card from the dark, you can tap it and it destroys target creature with Island Walk. So you can give them Island Walk here, here, take some fish liver oil and then poof, you can kill them. I mean, how cool is that? And you've got like fish liver poison instead of oil. I don't know, I, li I liked it, I liked it. I think it's cool. Um, let's take a look, what else do we have here? Ah, uh, yes, of course, Hell's Caretaker. So Hell's Caretaker is a very interesting card that you can combine with a lot of different uh, creatures. So Hell's Caretaker is one black and three. Summon Hell's Caretaker originally from Legends expansion. You can tap it to sacrifice a creature to take target creature from your graveyard and put it directly into play as though it were just summoned. Use this ability only during your upkeep. So obviously a way to combine this for example is with a, a Rook Egg. So the O3 um, Arabian Nights card and then once it goes to your graveyard you get a creature for it in return but also at the end of your turn you get a Rook 4 for flying uh, token. So that's a way of using it. But you can also use Hell's Caretaker with a, a Triskelion, for instance, shooting all the uh, damage from the trike, sacrificing it to get another trike from your graveyard and kind of keep cycling your trikes. Um, so that's another way you can use it. And there, there are just a bunch of ways you can use Hell's Caretaker. Um, it's just such, it's such, such a flavorful card. I think the biggest problem with Hell's Caretaker is that you can only do it during the upkeep. You know, that, that's making the card difficult to play with. Um, then we've got uh, Yakmov Demon. I think it's so cool. Yakmov Demon is so cool. I mean, it's, when we look at it, we've got to look at the facts. It's 6-6 six, six, flying first strike for 6 mana. That is really, 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 really good in old school. I mean, 6-6 six, six flyer for 6 with first strike. And it's the downside is you've got a second artifact. Okay. So wait a minute. So we've got a Aladdin here. They're close together. So with Aladdin, I can steal an artifact. With Yagmoth, I can sack it. So that, I mean, that alone, that already works great. But you can also use Yagmoth with a Mana Vault. Put Mana Vaults in your deck. Use Mana Vaults to play your threats out early. And then sack them to your Yagmoth Demon. I mean, that's that's a pretty good deal. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I think this card is really nice. 
I know that people have been playing this even in Tron. I mean, 6-6, six, six, flyer first strike. What's not to love? Um, let's take a look. We're actually, we're kind of almost, almost there. I think um, I would like to point out this, the Mountain Yeti. Uh, this, I think what a lot of people shouldn't underestimate is that this has protection from white. So you cannot play a Swords on it. So this is definitely a good sideboard card against all those white decks. Yeah, especially when you're combining it with Blood Moon. Uh, Blood Moon is, is making all the non-basic lands into mountains. This one is Mountain Walk. You can just walk over the mountains, you can deal damage to your opponent, and it's going to be difficult for your opponent to get rid of it, especially when you're playing a white mage, because it's got protection from white, so you cannot sort it. And Swords to Plowsiers is, I mean, so many decks have Swords to Plowsiers in them. So this is really, I think this card maybe should see a little bit more play. Um, then we have another one that I think is super useful, Revelation. Revelation is an uber annoying card for a lot of players because they don't enjoy showing their hand, especially when you're playing against control players because control players also want to always want to think step, steps ahead, have instants, have little tricks up their sleeve. With Revelation, you can see that all. Besides that, Revelation is also a great way to get rid of, let's say, the Abyss. So if you're playing a heavy uh, creature deck, I would definitely put Revelation in your sideboard to kind of deal with some of those enchant worlds. Because remember, if there's an enchant world on the table and you play an enchant world, then they get destroyed. So this is a great way to remove an abyss. Unfortunately, it doesn't remove moat because it's not an enchant world. But okay, you've got tranquility as well in green, I guess. But I just wanted to point that out because I think I think that's pretty uh, that's pretty cool about uh, Revelation. So that was about it for me and um, talking about um, talking about uh, about Chronicles. Let me know what your favorite card in the Chronicle expansion is. Like, what card do you enjoy playing in Chronicles and why? I know a lot of people play, for example, with Soul Canards. It's, it's a pretty decent card to play with if you have this color combination. Um, yeah, let me know. We'd love to hear from you. And what do you think about the Chronicles expansion? And do you remember what happened if you were playing in those days in 1995? What happened when it, when it got released? Do you remember this negative sentiment or do you say, okay, that was uh, over there in, in where you live, but where I live, we were actually very happy with Chronicles and we're very positive about the, the actual set. Let me know. We'd love to hear from you. And um, if you want to see me open this booster pack, stick around because that's going to happen in part three. We have reached part number three of, these, uh, of this Chronicles special and we are now going to open a Renaissance booster pack and this is a French booster l'assemblée so eight cards and um, like I said in the introduction in a while back like I said in the introduction of this video um, Renaissance is actually not the same as Chronicles so first of all the cards are black bordered and they're black bordered because they were released in that language for the first time in that country and that's why they are black bordered uh, because that used to be the rule if a card was released for the first time it would be black bordered if it was a reprint it would be with white borders um, and interesting here is that the German and French versions are the same so the Italian version is different uh, but this is a French version so they are basically black bordered and contain all the 122 cards that rotated into fourth edition from expansions and sets that were not printed in the two languages. Okay, so the breakdown is there are 10 cards from Arabian Nights, 23 cards from uh, Antiquities, Legends has 55 cards, the Dark has 32 cards, and also includes, this is pretty interesting, two cards from Unlimited, which were not printed in Revise, and those two are Iron Claw Orcs and uh, Twiddle. <laughs> Okay, let's get ready for the opening. So there are two uncommons or uncommon rares, however it works with these cards in the set, only or in the booster pack, only eight cards. And let's take a look. We see Antiquities, Arabian Nights, Legends, and the Dark. Very cool how old this is. So I'm gonna open it. I think I can actually pull 
um, a Sylvan library out of here. So here we go. So the Uncommons Rares are at the back of this booster. So we're first going to start with the common cards. There we go. We've got the Vultures. And we've got the Swamp Walker. Carnivorous Plant from the Dark. Let's see. Ah, Wall of Spears, first striker from the Antiquities expansion. We've got Nasp Asp. One one snake. And almost at the uncommon section. This is the last common. And there we go. So the first uncommon of the pack. Boom. We've got the gypsies. The last one. Here we go. Will it be a Sylvan? Bam! And we've got a Bloodlust. So these are the cards of this booster pack. Beautiful print, beautiful colors. Really nice. And this is it for today. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like, leaving a comment. It all helps. Um, you can also support us financially, or actually me. I'm saying us, but it's just me. <laughs> you can support me financially by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. There's a link popping up right now. You can click on the link and um, you can go to Timmy's Patreon and help to keep this show alive. Talking about the uh, Patreon, I would like to show you the patrons. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Uh -huh. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!